year, $10 billion worth of art is stolen, making art crime the third most profitable illegal activity in the world, after drugs and illicit arms deals. Only 50% of the paintings robbed from museums and private collections are ever recovered. So what are the police doing about this? There are countries who really do not perceive art crime as being a problem at all. While the police have their hands full catching killers and car thieves, private detectives are happy to step into the art crime gap. Able to do things less by the book than their uniformed counterparts, these independent investigators often stretch the limits of how far you can go. They earn their living in a system where you're rewarded primarily for bringing paintings back. I came to the conclusion that some items of property are more important than the people who steal them. Is getting your art back more important than putting criminals behind bars? What does it take to recover a stolen painting? And who do you turn to when your Picasso is pinched? Julia Nova in Italy on July the 2nd, 2000. The residents of this picturesque seaside town were all at home glued to the television for the Euro Cup final, Italy v France. The score is nil-nil. As the match got underway, two notorious art thieves headed for the Santuario della Madonna dello Splendore, an ordinary church with an extraordinary collection of art worth millions of dollars. Neither the neighbours nor the priest noticed as the men broke into the church, an old building with no alarms and no guards. A man out for a walk noticed movement inside, but walked on. He assumed it was just the priest. The thieves set about removing the first of the five 14th century paintings which they'd earmarked. A cheer went up across town when Italy almost scored. It briefly startled the thieves. As the robbers removed the final painting, they made an amateurish mistake. The sound pierced the din from the priest's television, and he set off to check all was well in the sanctuary. But just as he left the room, Italy scores, putting them ahead of France. The town went wild, and the football-loving priest returned to watch the replay. Saved by the goal, although Italy weren't, they lost the match, the men quickly loaded the huge paintings onto the van and made their getaway. When the theft was discovered by Padre Paolino the next morning, the town was stunned. While the paintings were extremely valuable, it was the theft of objects with such religious significance that caused even greater upset. The thieves must have had supernatural powers, because when we went to Holy Mass on the morning of July the 3rd, we found the frames of the paintings in the chancel. And we asked ourselves, how did they manage that? Padre Paolino's church is far from unique. 22,000 pieces of art are stolen in Italy on a yearly basis, 10% of which come from churches. Fortunately for the Padre, Italy's the only country in the world with its own police art squad, the Carabinieri Commando for the Protection of Cultural Heritage. The investigative unit is run by Lieutenant Colonel Ferdinando Musella, a man whose job it is to see that lost art gets found. Italy on July the 3rd, 2000. The Carabinieri Art Squad set off to the little seaside town of Giulianova. 
The night before, while the entire village had been watching the Euro Cup final on television, the local church was robbed of four paintings by Giacomo Ferrelli and one painting by Paolo Cagliari, better known as Veronese. The paintings are collectively worth more than $5 million. To avoid being noticed, the thieves who stole the paintings from the church in Giulianova took the back way in, down some stairs and through a small door used only by the priests. We lock all the entrances to the church just like you would lock all the doors of your house. But we didn't even have an alarm system at the time. We installed one after the burglary. Such alarms are still rare and art crime is still flourishing in Italy. According to UNESCO, 60% of all the art in the world is found here. Churches are particular favourites for art thieves. It's easy to see why. Millions of dollars of art and not a single alarm or guard to be seen. Enter the Carabinieri Commando for the Protection of Cultural Heritage. The squad's 300 agents recover about 3,000 stolen artefacts a year, 70% from abroad. After many years in the business, Lieutenant Colonel Ferdinando Musella knows his thieves. There are thieves who specialize in church burglaries. They only steal things from churches and never from homes. And then there's a group who we, the Carabinieri, call the Battery of Housebreaking Specialists. When they burgle a house, they make a careful selection and choose items that are hot on the market. The Giulianova robbery had all the markings of a highly professional job. The thieves took only the valuable paintings and left the rest behind. But how did they plan to get rid of a couple of king-sized religious paintings that were sacred and famous across Italy? The Carabinieri had to operate with the utmost speed because large religious paintings like these are often cut into smaller commercially viable pieces by the art thieves. The vaults of the Carabinieri are filled with retrieved paintings waiting to be returned to their rightful owners. Musella has a lot of experience of the tricks which thieves try to play. The larger pieces are cut to size for two reasons. Firstly, an altarpiece of 2 by 3 meters is difficult to sell because not very many people have such big walls in their homes. And secondly, because cutting it is a way of masking the painting, in the sense that the piece is hard to trace, because it differs from the original. It doesn't appear to be stolen anymore, because it's only a part of the whole piece. The Padre in Giulianova was naturally worried that his sacred paintings would be butchered. The Carabinieri worked swiftly, but came up with very little at first. Then a vital witness turned up. A few days prior to the theft, a woman had gone to the church to pray when she noticed two conspicuous men. One of them had a heart with a rose tattooed on his arm. The men, she said, seemed to be casing the church and had asked strange questions. Padre Paolino urged the woman to go to the Carabinieri. The tattoo turned out to be the big lead. Musella knew exactly where to look. It was a recognizable tattoo, and it reminded us of one of our regular customers. <laughs> That's how I like to call the people who we deal with who have a record. When we traced the information, we actually discovered that this person had moved from Rome to the region of Giulianova a few months earlier. The Carabinieri knew precisely who they were looking for, but they had no proof. So they devised a sting operation, codenamed Operation Bluff. They spread the news through the art world grapevine that they knew who the thieves were. It was designed to have two effects. First, the thieves would be certain to learn that they'd been identified. And second, it would make it impossible for them to find a buyer for their loot. The plan worked. The thieves soon contacted the Carabinieri and were prepared to cut a deal rather than cut the paintings. Musella agreed. 
the Carabinieri were given directions to an abandoned house 200 kilometers south of Rome, where the paintings were stashed. We had spread the rumor that the items had already been sold, that they had been forced to sell them to prevent even worse disasters, like an arrest or a release in exchange for returning the goods. The thieves, who were clearly not too concerned about the religious significance of the art, were arrested and served six months in prison. But most important, Padre Paolino and his parish had their paintings returned and the Giulianova church went back to being a quiet seaside sanctuary on the Adriatic. Only now, one with an alarm system. The Carabinieri special unit had taken just a month to solve the case.